I request everyone to please pay attention. Yeah. So good evening dear members to our NFT event today along with the celebratory evening as we bid adieu to a bittersweet 2021. The highlight of our event today is a conversation with Aprajita Jain, founder of Terrain Art, India's first blockchain powered art platform. She is also the co-founder of Nature Mod. We are in this beautiful gallery because of the same. Aprajita is one of India's most influential women in the art world. But in addition to that, her energy is infectious, vivacious and super inspiring. On that note, I am going to ask her to begin this conversation on NFT everything. I think you, can you, have your you guys can hear me. Thank you very, very much. It's always embarrassing to speak about anything that I do because everything that I do is just based on an experiment and things I enjoy. Um, I thought I'd start by why NFTs and why I thought of getting into blockchain and the story is about 2017-18. Um, 2018 we were dialoguing with two friends of mine who are actually thinkers, just thought leaders and with one of the guys who actually made Google Map Maker. Uh, he used to work for Google, uh, he made, he started Google Maps in India, did the Map Maker and then when he started working a lot more Indian guy, he says how can I possibly continue working only for 1 billion people on the earth which is people like us, I've got to use my ability to work for the other five billion, five and a half, six billion people on this earth. And so he left Google and he came back to India. And we started a conversation about, uh, he started speaking about AI and I said, you know, AI is, it's a bit scary, um, but you know, it's not gonna affect me. Me as in somebody in the creative world, somebody in the art world, he just started laughing hysterically. And I asked him, but why are you behaving like this? So he says, you've not seen what's going on. I said, no. He says, AI is making art. Now 2017, 2015 is where Google's deep dream began. And so they started showing me this art that was pretty sophisticated. And he said, this is already now, two years from open sourcing an algorithm for AI. And I said, but why is more of the world not talking about this? Like, if it's already, we were already speaking about how rote jobs are going to be taken by AI, you know. So robots will replace people in factories, etc, etc. But everybody felt like creative ko kuch nahi hoega. So we were like, okay, we're chilling now till, till whenever something comes and hits us in the face. So I decided to do the, an AI show. Later when we committed to it, we realized it's the world's first AI art show. Because we were the world's first, a lot of foreigners like and what New York Times, Wired, etc., called me and said, Why is India the first? And I was like, How pathetic. Why not? Why can't India be the first? So then I got invited to speak at some art tech events. Now, because I went to art tech events, there were a lot of art tech people. <laughs> now, all these art tech people started saying, started talking something called blockchain, okay? And I was like, what is blockchain? <laughs> Why are we talking about art with blockchain? We should stick to AI, you know, that's it. Like, there's nothing beyond that. And then one by one, they were like these, we were in God forsaken Bahrain, out of all the people in this planet that you can go to. <laughs> 50 people who are on the cutting edge of what's going on with tech in art. And why has tech not disrupted art till now? And that's when our conversations began about like what the problems are in the art world. How is tech going to solve these problems? What is the idea of ownership? So, you know, like the, I'm just going to give you guys a couple of numbers. So, uh, the, when I say the fine art world, so antiques, regular fine art work in the world is a market size of about $60 billion. Uh, India is $250 million. China is 11 billion dollars. So first of all, India is nothing compared to the world at large. And um, the NFT market is supposed to be at 300 billion dollars in 2030. So number wise, anything it's staggering. Um, the next question became, okay, what are our problems? And so the conversation at one point was 3D printing. Now, we have artworks upstairs that NatureMort has been working with our artists where we are doing 3D printed artworks by artists. This is now when technology is still not as advanced as, you know how technology is moving ahead, right? Um, we're already doing 3D printed artwork. We're already doing 3D scanning and then printing. Which means that, let's say, 
30 years later, I can go to anybody's home, probably in my phone, I can 3D scan something, have a 3D printer at home, replicate it. So then comes a question about prov like provenance. I paid a crore for this work. Somebody walks into my house, can replicate it for like 30,000 bucks. What happens to the value of my work? So therefore, ownership, provenance, authenticity, already fakes are larger than the real market in India. Most of the moderns that you get in the market are fake. So, you know, there are so many basic problems that actually the only t tech answer to that is blockchain. Now, um, so we started delving more and more into, okay, what do we need to do, etc, etc. We realized that essentially, so 2019 end is when we began working in a company for blockchain in art. I didn't begin to think it was going to be an NFT platform, but really the ecosystem of the arts around South Asia. The idea was to empower people in villages, uh, empower artists. Like I realized that in India there might be 20 galleries, good galleries. The other, that's it, like 1.4 billion people, 20 galleries. Can you imagine how many artists we're making or producing and how few of them are getting represented or nurtured? So the answer was that, you know, all that we've learned at NM, uh, and our collective knowledge should become democratic. We should give it to people to allow more people to get, to raise themselves up and have a fair chance at having a career in the arts. So like, you know, about, a, I think six, seven years ago, you couldn't go into sport because you weren't making money. Mm. That has changed, right? Today, you're not going to tell your child, don't go to sport because you're not going to make money. You're going to make a lot of money. Mm. Right now, still don't become an artist. You're going to remain poor. We want to change that. We don't want it to be that you're going to remain poor. If you're good, you're going to make a living. The idea is, are you good or are you not? And can we empower you to become better? Can we help support you? As an individual gallery, we can't. We have only so much time, we have finite energy, we can only do so much justice. But tech allows us to sort of scale up the ecosystem. So really, Terrain became, and I, you know, honestly, I didn't start with a definitive idea. The idea was, okay, we've got to use blockchain. It's the technology that kind of answers what we've got to do. But where we are now is a much sort of more, um, is a more holistic idea of it being an ecosystem, number one. But we want to help liquidity in the market. We want people to be able to earn money from their art, whether they created it or whether they own it. So suppose I want a piece of art and God forbid I come into a problem. And I want to hedge that art and make money of it. Is my option only selling the full piece? Can I fractionalize ownership? Can I license the image? There's so many options of monetization that are, were previously non-existent because tech didn't allow us to do that. So, you know, in I am not a tech person, guys, so do not think I understand the tech terms. My tech guys are at the back and if there are any strange questions that may come, I will redirect them to them. Um, the entire idea is that what blockchain allows us to do through NFTs is digitally certify what was earlier not possible. So like, it's not like digital art didn't exist before. It's not like video art didn't exist before. Conceptual art didn't exist before. It's just that it's kind of unleashed the tradability of all these things. And with this entire idea of the metaverse, which is your virtual life <laughs> coming at play, um, a lot more can get monetized and the money is just becoming insane. I mean, Facebook is not stupid. They went and redid themselves as meta. Obviously, there's a lot of money and much more money than what they are looking at. And that's the kind of volume that you're looking at in the future. So our kids, a lot of us have kids. Um, I know my son lives in some game. I don't know what game. <laughs> that game changes every few months, but there's some game that he's on, right? So he's like thinking that game. He's you know, whatever money we give him is going into in-app in gaming purchases. Uh, my daughter is on Snapchat. She qu communicates with me through memes. I've had to understand memes a little bit more because we're not communicating with words anymore. Strange images are coming to me and I'm supposed to understand it. So the world has changed. And if we don't keep changing with it, we're going to be just kept aside because they're changing. They're not stopping for us. And I think that this entire idea of what we're calling the creator economy. So like we saw that with the last or the current lot of large web companies like actually like Facebook or you know like Google, Amazon, there are a few companies that control the world essentially. And there is a basic ups, like a pendulum swing the other way saying no, we don't want monopoly, we want decentralized. So what was web 2.0 is now heading to 3.0 which is going to be about the creator. 
So that's where the world is heading and it's just all sort of colliding. I don't know what's coming first, but this is where we're all heading towards. So that's a little bit about, uh, about me personally. I'm happy to start talking about any questions. So that we're going to get into a conversation with Aprajita and our day chairs for today, Sudhi Modi and Yashodra Bajoria. This is a really informal conversation, to, so feel free to interject, butt in if you don't understand something, if you want to ask another question related to what they're chatting about. Just feel free, it's a conversation with all of you. I sit here only side of me. It's fit for my 100%. 100%. 100%. No, no, please, please sit there. No, no, it's okay. No, please don't. Please don't. Okay, you need to be a little Yeah. No, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I know you're being disruptive and all, but please, please. Please take center seat. No, yeah, it's just... I'm going to come on myself. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prajita. That was amazing. And, uh, you know, I think what you've done with the space, the fact that you are, you know, as innovative and disruptive as you are, I think uh, it's given us quite a good background into NFTs and your journey. If you could maybe break it down, you know, between like, you know, somebody in the room, like say this is my first conversation about this, NFT, crypto, Bitcoin, blockchain, I mean, what are these possible, like how do we kind of break it down? Sanup is looking at me, <laughs> who's part of my tech team, and he's always going to be quizzing me on how much I know now. <laughs> because all the tech stuff, I'm like, okay, no, will this work here? Limit terms. Limit okay, so basically, uh, let's look at blockchain as a protocol like the internet is a protocol, let's look at blockchain as a protocol on which all these things are based. Uh, uh, Bitcoin is a digital currency, so we, we call USD, INR, etc. something called fiat currency, which is basically sovereign, that means a country has, backed. Is, has backed it, there are rules, there are hedges, there are gold reserves, bullions to sort of, the price of that is based on that. Uh, digital currencies like ETH, uh, Sol, like Dogecoin, all these, there, I don't know how many coins there are, but the famous currencies are the ones that have ecosystems around it. Now, the difference between a cryptocurrency and an NFT is that cryptocurrency has value. So, I think the ETH was yesterday $4,000, one so ETH. by ETH you mean Ethereum? No, ETH is the currency on Ethereum. ETH is the currency on Ethereum. Ethereum is a protocol, ETH is the currency. Oh uh, uh, Bitcoin is the currency. Now I don't know what's the protocol Bitcoin is on, in, on Bitcoin itself. So like Bitcoin is, you know how it's been. It's gone up to I don't know what it's at today, but like we've we've hovered between fifty to sixty thousand dollars for one Bitcoin for a while now, and you see crashes and you go up. So it's very very, um, it's not it, it's risky. It started at what two thousand like at barely anything, and now we're at sixty thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars a Bitcoin, which is a lot of money, right? So cryptocurrency has inherent value and NFT has no value except the what five people say it has which means that I could make a sketch and I can't paint, draw as a human only I can't and if I digitized it and I put it through NF and made an NFT of it no one's really going to buy it hence it has no value but let's talk about someone like this, this is a guy called Amrit Pal Singh who is actually on the front running of an Indio, Indian crypto uh, NFT artist his work starts at about, I think, 3 ETH. It begins at 3 ETH. So he prices his work at ETH. Okay. But would that be in money terms? So 4000 or $12,000 a work, let's say. So uh, the um, it's because that many more people want it and through a, through a very democratic bidding process, it gets to a certain value. So it's, the value is given by the people who want it like a pure auction. Right. The number of people that want it is a number of, is the way you drive up the price and then a certain market dynamic allows that price to get established. So the beauty of the NFT world is that it's free market dynamics that are at play. In like, uh, this is something we discussed earlier, that it plays like nature mod, we discuss whatever we sort of decide to show could become a trend for the next, you know, we, we show this person that that artist has that X chances to becoming visible, known, etc, etc, etc. As a gallery owner, where you're saying that as a gallery you are, owner, you, you control the market in some sense. Not control, but you kind of dictate the what direction it's going to go. Hmm. We begin with pricing. There's a certain control that we have of what we do. In the NFT market, of course, there is certain control that is happening at levels, but 
the it's it's a lot more democratic people are dictating whether they want it people are dictating whether there's value in it and so it's a lot more like i said democratic in a sense the primary and the secondary market are coexisting right because and are, are unabashedly mm -hmm. they want a secondary market mm -hmm. you talk to a regular artist they are very shy of money yeah. of a secondary marketplace they don't want auctions these guys are saying bring it on man bring it on. the more the better keep yeah. reselling it we'll get royalties so the other thing about nfts is royalties so uh, basically in the smart contract whatever your terms are established every time you sell it and you would transfer the nft a royalty goes back to the original creator so it's today if i sold my first artwork let's say for 10000 bucks i get whatever i get but if somebody eventually six times down the line sold it for a lakh it's not like i don't make any money of it you always make money you always make a certain percentage of every sale which is very empowering for, for, the, for the creator mm. yeah for the artist for any creator so uh, aj i think that's what i'm going to call you because that's what we've been addressing you and that's quite nft in its own way <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell us like walk us through a typical nft transaction how do i buy where do i keep it how so, do i sell it and when do i make money also can i buy it <laughs> also can i buy it in cash and yeah of course can i that was source question can i buy it in cash so the answer the first answer to the cash comment is no you can't buy it in cash <laughs> the second answer is you can buy it two ways you can either buy it through fiat currency when i say fiat i mean rupees in india so in india right now you can't you're not technically allowed to use cryptocurrency to buy a product or service so they are not entirely sure they when i say they i mean the government or regulators aren't entirely sure whether we are a product or a service so we're in the gray right now okay there's a lot of nonsense conversation about cryptocurrencies being banned i don't think it's going to get banned it's too much money in circulation already but who knows right i'm not the rbi governor or the you know government i don't know what's going to happen but you can either buy nft through a cryptocurrency anywhere in the world or through a fiat currency right now terrain is fiat complied which means you can buy through credit card and you get a uh, nft transfer to your wallet which can be made either by you or by us we we'll, we can help you make a wallet uh, if you buying it through crypto then chances are that you are so we are tying up with a crypto exchange for example and if someone has crypto they go they come to us they buy from crypto but in the back end what you don't see is the exchange is converting the crypto to inr for us Okay. and transferring it to us in inr so i can send the money to my artist in inr so that we are not we are fully compliant with the law so if the value of the crypto is say going up does the artwork also go up the value of the yes artwork? so then you get a double kind of return but it can go down Hybrid also hi but cap in the sense you're holding it in crypto terms so no like if you buy it from us in rupees right now which is what's yeah. happening yeah. then your purchase value is rupee but in about a month you'll be able to buy through crypto So then depends who's used what currency and where. So the, they'll always hedge it against oh, it also, what yeah. they bought it at. Yeah. yeah, and then of course the market dynamic of the artist itself. Like so, people sold that work for seventy million dollars. Then they made another work which sold for twenty-five million dollars. Now somebody could see that as a big crash, right? Yeah. Seventy, seventy to twenty-five. I'm like, whoa! He also got twenty-five million yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, it's it, honestly, if you ask me, I also don't understand like. how these crazy prices are coming but my sense is that we we have a lot of tech money that's coming in tech money that didn't see value in traditional forms of art that didn't really think there was anything cool about people painting or they enjoy the school tech stuff and they so they are willing to part with their money for something that they sort of uh, vibe with So I think that's a perfect segue into our next question. So I think you had a question on, uh, you know, the you demographic. Know, yeah, you know the thing is, uh, I mean, if we could maybe talk a little bit about the typical NFT buyer. I mean, could like, for instance, could my mom buy an NFT? Like, you know, my grandma. So I think anybody can buy an NFT if they like it. As an NFT, so we have here you know, actually. So we have digital NFTs. We have physical paintings which are backed by NFT as a certificate. um so there are ways of but all our works will be nfts so 
of they might want to buy a physical work uh, upstairs would be nft like your asim waqif sir no so nature mod hasn't yet sort of signed on to we've not what done that yet but terrain stuff physical stuff this is terrains like for that example the paintings they will have an nft along with it we will not be giving any what we are trying to do is move the idea of paper certificates to digital nft certificates see the thing is if i can fake a painting i can fake the bloody certificate how hard is it yeah true so we want to move away from any paper trail and people lose certificates and so of course you can lose your key to your you can lose your nft key as well yeah. but then now that we can only accommodate for so much you know <laughs> so i think that the idea is that in the next couple of years to change the standard of transaction into nfts whether it's physical or it's digital it doesn't matter so that the world can see the world is going towards transparency there's nothing that the people don't know about us forget that the government doesn't know about us a facial recognition is everywhere all our moves are tracked so the more transparent things become it's better that our ownership is also well defined this is what belongs to me if i want to sell it today i can now um, earlier at nature mod we used to work with asim for example one of the works he made was of a it was a large bamboo installation now bamboo decays that's a truth so when the client came to me and this is like really long ago the client said okay what's going to happen when it gets rotten and we were like um we'll give you the plans and you remake it so they said but like god forbid something happens to you in between then my money is down the drain and she had a point right she wants to buy something how can we make it full proof for her to own a conceptual piece of art where she's really actually buying the legal agreement because that work will constantly need to be remade or the banana with the duct tape the catlan work right the banana is going to get spoiled in 2 days Obviously. so what do you own you own a contract essentially you can keep recreating it with the contract we've had this actually many many times museums have bought digital works we had sold a jitish kalat work to the art institute of chicago which was just leds it was a speech which was which was then made on the steps of the museum now we know that led is going to get spoiled wo storage mein jayega wo 5 years mein kuch na kuch spoil hoega so what then the work is gone but a very intense legal agreement was drafted paper pages and pages and pages god knows how many lawyers were involved in that and essentially they bought the agreement so as life goes on there will be things that we buy that will decay but we still want to own the rights of it right and we want to be able to resell it god forbid at least have i have so many video works that are now i may as a junk because number one the format has changed it used to be in first cds then it went to something else then it went to something else who is going to convert it all so it's just gone it's like it's thrown like flushed down the toilet so the idea is how do you make something that is can remain and can ownership remains so people don't lose value how much of what you are saying is uh, you know coming from a space of understanding i mean i know a lot of us don't have any tech understanding i know you've said that about your team with anoop and i know he's a great guy and all of that but we don't have anoops so uh, how much like i i feel as a buyer we feel that oh my god this is an unknown territory let's not get into there how so much I of do tech think, understanding i, I do think that we because it's all so new listen just look at it 2015 was deep dream that's when like ai and art began block the nft sort of awareness only began with the beeple sale open sea existed before nifty gateway existed before but till that headline wasn't made and till that kind of money didn't come into the into the space nobody was looking at it okay it's all about the money and therefore with with this kind of boom and the kind of money that is now of people the companies that are facing towards it i have a feeling that people will also solve for so like the other question is how do you enjoy the nft so immersive art like team labs that you would also so about. yeah so like this time you know miami basel had a lot of thrust on nfts and immersive works right uh, in miami there is a museum quasi institutional space called super blue i highly recommend whenever anybody goes there it's only about immersive the idea is not to own anything it's that you make your money through ticket sales So the number of people that go see it that's how you make money of the art. Team Lab is like that. They they make something like 9 million dollars an exhibit based on t- on ticket sales. So Team Lab is that place where you kind of walk in and there's a three dimensional sort of you know LED play. Yeah. You're, you're it's walking like an into the experience. Yeah. Yeah. So the entire point is that like 
things are changing. I'm not saying that there's traditional art is not there to stay. Of course, it's there to stay. We're just adding on more. And I think that we're going towards a, an experience economy, which has been repeated to us so many times. Children, our next generation wants experiences more than they want acquisition. And therefore, we have to solve for that. Yeah. We can't be left behind. Why should the experience only be like a Bollywood experience? Why can't it be an intellectual art experience that people are getting? Um, yeah, so I think that we're seeing, we're seeing a shift in, uh, in people's demands of what they want around them. No, I think that's amazing. I mean, I fully share your enthusiasm um, for the space. But tell me, like, I mean, think about, you know, talking about all of this in the Indian context, where, you know, we had the Indian art funds of the 2000s, yeah. where any time we try to be speculative with art, because essentially the depth is not there in the Indian, you know, in the Indian market. Like you said, I mean, it's a minuscule size of, compared to any other large economy. So like what, I mean, what happens when all of this crashes? I mean, in the sense that, you know, it's, if it's not liquid, if it's like, I mean, is there a crash coming? Is there like, you know, what will happen like five years down the line? Will it still be trendy? So AJ, the next set of questions is to get you uncomfortable. So it's addressing yeah, yeah, all yeah, the difficult yeah. questions. Let's, let's, let's bring, bring it on. on. Yeah, so it's, it on. it's addressing the so, skeptic in the world and all the dada so, you know, and uncles. Uh, I always see, first of all, let's talk about a larger point of view that there's a lot of VC money. There's so much money been printed around the world that the VC money is anyway staggering. All these insane valuations that are coming, like does Nike, does it merit one point uh, lakh twenty five? You, you tell us. I don't know, man. <laughs> I made some money and I was happy and I got out. My point is that does it merit that? We don't know the answer. So first of all, there is a lot of liquidity in the market. At some point, things will correct. At that point, will the NFT market correct? One hundred percent, it will correct. But it's like the two thousand eight dot com burst. When it burst, did the internet go away? No. The really strong companies emerged, right? Airbnb emerged. We work as a all those companies emerged as the strong companies that kind of change the way we live our everyday lives. Like that, NFTs are not going anywhere, but the rubbish content is going to go away. So everybody who made like a ad hoc purchase, not understanding what the quality of content was, is going to lose money. But that's like the stock market. You make a bad bet, you're going to lose money, right? So you cannot be. You can't be not aware when you're doing something. You still have to research a little bit, I feel. So, uh, I, I know this question has possibly come to you many times. People say that, you know, why would I invest in an NFT when I can experience it? I mean, I have a digital artwork in your you house. You mean you can have, I can, uh, I, I can download the people work. I can download the people work, play it in my house. I mean, what's the big deal? So, you know, this market is not being, so I, actually if you look at the NFT market, the numbers right now, 90% of the market is the under $1,000 NFT. So, it is not, the wealthy that are pushing this market ahead is the common guy. Is the guy who's buying a uh, thousand rupees worth of Bitcoin, thousand rupees worth of ETH. Those are the people that now have a chance to have a foot in the door of the art and collectible world. A gallery like Nature Mart. The truth is, we make it. It's tough to come in and say, you know, I don't really have a budget, but I really want to buy something. Now the construct of it is different, we're looking at a very high end thing. So by, as a byproduct, we become exclusive. The NFT world is very inclusive. You can buy, you can buy anything at any value, number one. You can buy a bit of a work. So the 70 million is what got the attention, but what is selling is under thousand dollars, is what I'm trying to say. So I, what, it's a lot more inclusive than the traditional art world is. And it's, and, uh, you're right now only talking about art, but Bollywood snippets are going, sports collectibles are going. Maybe some Marathi movie is Marathi become. movies are being uh, dropped. Robert Amitabh Bachchan has NFTs. Uh, has got so, NFTs coming. Yeah. So think about like when I think of the art world, the tradition, like the my NM world, I think of the intellectual wealthy elite. Somebody who gets it because we're not decorative, so you got to understand why we're doing it, and you got to have the money to be able to. So the, the, the Shahin Shah dialogue of Amitabh Bachchan is apparently becoming, you know, uh, exactly. Kehle Kutume, whatever the dialogue yeah. is. And that's going to get NFT, uh, sort of, you know, NFT, it's going to get yeah. tokenized. Yeah. So by that, by that logic, we know that this is the true Amitabh Bachchan's voice and therefore it's become art yes. and no other, it can't be, count, there won't be any counterfeit. Let's just call it collectibles. Okay. Let's call this entire world of 
like I said earlier, earlier we dictated what art is. Today the crowd is saying, no, for me this is what art is. I don't enjoy art, I enjoy sport. Why should I not have sport stuff on my walls? Or somebody says, but I'm a Bollywood fan. Now, like, I don't think I have a choice anymore. Do you get what I'm saying? I hear you. Like the world at large, we are first of all now catering to a much wider audience and that wider audience will not stick to what we are saying is art. They are dictating what they want on their walls as art. So now my point is that at some point I have to think how arrogant of me to think I'm the one to dictate value, right? It's, it's sort of flipping itself. I'm not saying that this will not exist. Of course it will exist. But we're just going to be including a lot many more people in this entire platform. So will our regular art buyers replace all their paintings with digital screens? No. But on their digital screens at home, will they have NFTs? Yes. And suppose there's a person who is like a tech guy who's a, who mines cryptocurrency or, you know, uh, you know, my trainer wants to buy NFTs. Now, what is motivating him is that eventually he resells it. He says, you know, bought ape, somebody bought at seven or some thousand dollars. God knows how much is 700,000 solar. That's what I want to do. Wants to make a quick buck. Wants to enjoy it. It's super cool. A lot of FOMO involved. So we're going to get into it. Now, we'll do quick research, top 10 NFT artists to buy, best this thing, best thing, and cut back, buy, you know, God forbid he loses money, then he's... Hardly any money to lose, you're saying? There's not that much money to lose, so eventually. Then, but, okay, I mean, but then what should one buy? I mean, like, what do you suggest? No, that's a very bad question to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, all about, about I'm all about the bad question. <laughs> So, you know, um, ask us in a month and we'll tell you because right now we're actually looking at, we're, we've been working, our teams, we've got amazing curators, amazing curators on board and they've been working on a younger generation of artists, both who are uh, physical as well as digital. Um, we're really trying to sift out the best quality content that there is out there so that we do at least many layers of curation before we bring it to the market. But, but, but AJ, on that point, tell us about the Araku coffee story, for example, or tell us about, you know, the big misses that you had, you were just telling us about the, uh, oh, I have to tell you about this. So when I went to, when I started doing my whole uh, art tech thing, I went to what's called the Crypto Valley. It's a place called Zug near Zurich mm. in Switzerland. It's where all the, it, I think Ether, Ethereum has its main, like whatever, they're all registered out of places like Zug, okay. So I go there and there is this young artist, blockchain artist called CryptoPunk there. And uh, there are five works available for $700 each and the gallerist tells me, Aprajita, you really got to buy these crypto punks. This is all we have left, five, seven hundred dollars each. And they want to do a solo show with you because you guys did the AI show. I said, what so, rubbish uh, is uh, this? Just for the benefit of everybody and me, so crypto punks are those weird looking cats. No, those are not the cats. Those are crypto kitties. Are this is kitty? those pixelated, uh, <laughs> I don't know, does anybody have a crypto punk image? This, this really weird pixelated, okay. like you feel like you've gone back to the first computer. Okay. okay. They show, he show you the crypto punk image. It's, the thing is with the crypto punk image is generated through blockchain, the image itself. So I said, no, forget it, $700 into five, what a waste of bloody money. They're lootoing me. I think the last crypto punk, how much did it sell at? One of the current lowest price available is $321,000. The current lowest dollars that is crazy and you missed that vote. I oh. missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I missed it totally. I underestimated. I mean, these are things that I saw starting from, like I said, $700. I was seeing all these different, uh, this board ape and crypto kitty and all that. We were seeing so closely because we were analyzing what is going on. And my response was the same. This is rubbish. Like what is not what nonsense is going on? And now I'm like, why was I not on this rubbish? Like, you know, I would have just made a lot of money. But I have a feeling that we're sort of leapfrogging ahead. We're not doing a linear, slow, organic growth. We're jumping ahead. And I think that where the mismatch is, is what we think is cool and what is cool now is no longer the same thing. Like the sneaker market. I don't know whether you guys follow the insane yeah, sneaker I mean, market. Sneakers, by the way. Yeah. Un unfortunately not me. But this, this resale sneaker market is apparently a real rage. Now, I can't fathom why certain, like 
what's going on in this market but the truth is it's there so the and these weren't created by trend setters these were created in underground spaces like the movements of being cool like this guy who just passed with the off white label now of course it was bought by louis vuitton but why did he become famous because it was about the larger public a larger whole it wasn't about like sort of kim kardashian and kanye came on the bandwagon but they didn't start it do you know what i mean and that was really fascinating that we're seeing a world where people are removing the power away from a particular person to say this is cool a lot of them i mean i still see 250 million people following kim kardashian but <laughs> what i'm saying is that there is there is a shift there is a shift that's happening and it's good to be cognizant of it and the fact that our idea comes back to wanting to democratize art and allow more people to get involved and become inclusive and allow great quality to be there so the one thing we will be very careful careful of in our curated section is we will work towards you know making sure good quality content is out there sure. so just sort of as a final word uh, aj if you could like what's the big vision for art and as collectors or just starting out as collectors i mean today i wouldn't know that this is something to be bought like just how you missed it i mean being in this industry if you could miss a crypto punk i mean certainly people like us will so how do we kind of where do we start and where do you see this headed so i think that the the two things that we are working on is uh, the ecosystem of the arts we want things to become a lot more transparent information wise knowledge wise i i no longer want that somebody needs to know somebody to buy good quality art and the good quality could be i want to buy digital and therefore you should get good quality i want to buy physical and there there should be there's no one answer for them all but the idea is to make information a lot more accessible which is what, what there's a big big problem with accessibility today uh the other thing is we want to empower a lot more creators uh so from a tribal artist to a gaming designer amrit is not a trained artist he's a trained i think graphic designer or what is what is he trained as i'm not entirely sure but he's not trained in art school he's trained as like 3d modeling and stuff like that now like and he gets commissioned to the entire parameters are different but you know we are beginning to see patterns even there who is going to make the cut who is not going to make the cut who is you know standing strong in what they're doing there's a girl called khyati trayan who's very good there's amrit who's very good there many great indian and then of course world over artists that one can buy and here there's no borders na yeah yeah you can purchase anybody it's so easy um i mean right now we're so focused on curating physical as well as the tech part of it because it's there's so many barriers especially with um even something simple as buying eth to convert and mint the nft that once that is done in a couple of like weeks i think we'll move on to coming up with lists of things that you should look at buying <coughs> and people that we think have a future of course we can't bet on it i mean but of course we can only give suggestions i mean uh, that makes total sense so no, i think this is a uh, been amazing uh, aj i think the suggestions and all of this i mean all the mining through all the difficult questions has been amazing uh, all the puns intended but i actually want to open the floor to anybody who wants who has a question which we have covered or i know people have done a lot of homework and yeah, people have been reading <laughs> someone recommended it because yeah yeah that's amazing yeah. i can give two hands up please go on Hi. 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 I'm Sulbi here. I just wanted to understand that like, we've got an idea about the buying part of the art, but what if like an, uh, a small artist like me wants to convert their art into NFT? How do we go about that? So essentially, what we are next right now, we were uh, what we opened up with first was a curated marketplace, which is where our curators are working with the artists. We are representing them. The next that's going to open is the open marketplace, where anybody can come, mint their work, and have a marketplace and people viewing it. So I think that's going. That's a month away. Okay. And when then, you say mint, you mean convert the physical into digital? To yeah, mint an NFT out of it and then have it for sale. So within a month we will be opening and that and that's all going to happen on terrain is it yeah yeah fantastic okay hi yes. hi i'm aradha hi so my question is a little more basic so you know all of us have pieces of art at home and it's paintings sculptures yeah so do you think those can be made yeah. so again the the one big uh, problem that i see in the nft world is actually legal ownership 
and IPR. So uh, nobody really knows who owns it. So like there are IPR laws in the country. So so there's India and there are laws in India, but the laws in America are different. So when we are minting an NFT of our existing artwork that belongs to someone else, we have to be very careful of who has ownership of this in the sense that the copyright of it. I own the work, but do I own the rights to the work and to replicate the work? So in India, like 60 years post death, the IPR becomes open. So like Raja Ravi Verma's IP is not owned by anybody, it's open to public. So I can mint an NFT without a problem, but Hussain I can't. I need a letter of permission of next of kin. So it really depends on who, what, if it's antiquities, yes you can. If it's uh, somebody who died within 60 years, you need to take permission. Only for tangible, um, I mean, just a non-tangible paintings, or can I own that full piece of art, or only a part of it? Yes. So basically, uh, NFT can be an intangible of an intangible work or a tangible work. When I, when you say tangible, you mean material, right? Yes, like you can have both. Uh, is eventually, uh, in about three four months, we'll go to fractional ownership. Where suppose I have a Gaiton day and I want to raise money against it, I want to send 30% share of it. That's fractional ownership. We'll be getting into that. Uh, so then your question, can I own a part of it? That's, you can, eventually you'll be able to own it. Internationally, that's already happening through a company called Masterworks. Uh, they're fractionally, they're, uh, they're treating each painting like a company and shares of right. each company. I think, uh, that's the idea. The idea is to monetize whatever you have in many ways. It's not not being recognized also. It's not. Uh, yeah, so uh, there is like it's just grey. Yeah, exactly. So right now there is no like kind of fine line. So we kind of not sure whether it will be legalized or what are the parameters. So how are we going to go about it? Be you know investing in something where the future in our country is not. You know, so the the truth is the future of crypt, uh, the crypto is a grey area for every government. It's very difficult to fathom how to regulate it. They want to regulate it because obviously they'll make a lot of money if they tax it, right? I don't know the answer on how they're going to do it, but I can't imagine them banning all the money that is already in it. I cannot imagine it. So much money is already in it. You said it's going to be another kind of demon. I mean, demonetization. Like demonetization. You make all that money invalid. I can't imagine them doing that. Right. Yeah. That's what. Then it has to be all these cryptocurrencies and... So, the, but it makes sense to do it through that because uh, the provenance is moved like that and uh, royalties are gained through that. But it's already difficult to sell these bitcoins due to these specific... No, basically it's online exchanges where you can sell your cryptocurrency but NFT platforms have, have resale... So, like OpenSea has... Uh, soon, uh, selling a resale, we will, I think, three months. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, that's the other thing that, that, that's the other thing, I've had so many experiences of people that I've known, that I've had to sell their very good works for nothing because somebody cheated them off that money, that I felt like quite shitty, you know, like why, if it's, I've seen old women who have nothing else that they're dependent on, but they had that one work, and somebody realized that they know nothing, we're going to screw them off, we're going to take the bulk of that money, and that's terrible. It's so just the terrible. The value now. Yeah, so the idea is if you make it transparent. Hmm. I think that's another thing. I mean, like just giving kids canvases and asking them that figure it out is also a challenge. They'll probably sell it for nothing. <laughs> Let's see, you know, I mean, the idea is that all good artists become good artists because they can't do anything else. So, like, this guy, when if you re, if you follow him on Instagram, Amrit, he says, God knows how many rejections he's had, how much like how painful his journey has been. But he's not given up, right? So the idea is that a freak thing can be one time, but really growing in success, you have to have content. There's nothing that has grown in life without content. It stayed there. I think we have another can question. Can you show us some more NFTs just for? So actually all these are NFTs uh, which are, so like we kind of borrowed it from Amrit. Those are a, a show that we're doing right now. A young guy called Arun Joy, I think he's still 
just about finished college or finishing college or something like that. We've done really well with him. And these come backed by physical prints as well. I think this is Khyati? Laya. Laya. She's 13 years old, this wow. artist. That's wow. amazing. How much would, I mean, sorry to be so like brass uh -huh. tracks, but how much would things like this go? So like I said, this is Threeth, which is $12,000, right? Our enjoy is what, 75,000 rupees? 85. 85. 85. So this is either on a screen, an iPad, yeah. And a lot of people use it at their avatars on Twitter and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, we didn't talk about metaverse, but eventually the idea of the metaverse and your avatars, people are going to commission because now you want to be fancy there. So, like Gucci and Balenciaga and all are making money off making jackets for your avatars. Yeah. So, like they are saying the luxury industry in the metaverse is going to be larger than the real, uh, the, I mean, than the physical luxury industry. I mean, the current, the online money. Yes. Like, no, but it's real money. <laughs> like the Monet, for example, the people work, it sold for I think 14, 15 million dollars more than a Monet. Yes. Just so, I mean, it's just about what value somebody accrues to something, right? How much they're willing to pay for that. So, the, I mean, the guys who bought it, are miners, are Bitcoin or cryptocurrency miners. So that's an interesting point to leave a fact with that the first time the Christie's auction site ever crashed Crash was, because of, was because of an NFT and yeah. they had to reschedule an auction. It was the first time in their history yes. they had to reschedule an auction because of an NFT sale yes. because people went ballistic wanting to yes. get it yes. and it was by a 16 year old black guy wow. and so is that where we are headed? You know, I, honestly, only God knows where we are <laughs> We are just playing our part in this and trying to figure and making sure that we don't get left behind as a country. Wow. And as we literally, like, it annoys me when we think that we are not able to come up with brands and why are we not on the forefront? Right. I think... How do you dictate pricing? So, if I'm a young creator, I'm just starting out, obviously I'm not aware of like, you know, what's the right price because uh, I'm not commercially minded. So, how would I price it? And how do you so, like, with, with curated marketplaces, we're helping the artists with pricing. But with open, we recommend starting low. We'll give a recommended price and then they can take it. And then it then becomes, like I said, market dynamics. Who's willing to pay how much for your work? Yeah, because open has a bidding. Yeah. Eventually, that's where we'll all be heading. So basically, your artwork gets, the pricing for your artwork gets determined by what people bid for it. Kind of. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Pretty much what like StockX and things like that is for the sneaker yes. market, you know. It's exactly. Kind of like, it's like the stock market for art itself. Yeah. Uh, auction market, like it's just pure auctioning. Like who's going to do what, yeah, mm. for it. Great. Uh, I think uh, that no, kind of... One more question. Oh, sorry. Like, no. Art forms or like if I am excited, I bought the terrain art. Just buy it now. <laughs> 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 like, press the button. You know, like, so it, I, uh, if you want to make terrain art. Dot yeah. com. Terrain dot art. Terrain dot art. Sorry. Terrain dot art. That's where you. We are through Fiat, so you can use a credit card. When you are entering a new territory, till the time your money doesn't get involved, till the time you don't even invest like a ten thousand or twenty thousand bucks, you won't learn. Yeah, I'm sure. So True. All on the paper. Sure. I am very fascinated with the. Different, yeah, you know, different terms that I've learned today, but practically for it to remain in my head and to understand it, I would want to That's a great it. question. So the I actually daily. The territory was also around, so if you guys actually want to consider purchasing one, you can have a conversation. Then, yeah. That's how I understood the share market also. Yeah. You know? But you know, that's right. You start punting with the smaller items where you don't mind losing that money. Actually, earlier when there was, not like in the last two weeks, the media made such a big brouhaha about this whole crypto being banned and all. We actually had the crypto exchange going to be here. And they were giving 5,000 rupees worth of crypto free to play around with. Wow. To just learn how to do it, you know. But now we didn't do it because we were like, okay, gray and this and that. Like, don't want to get caught up in yeah, something. No, fair enough. But yeah, always. Getting into it is the best way of doing it. Yeah. Always. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So I would like to know uh, that, as you said, that a lot of young artists, you know, so do you think that you know the young kids who you know aspire to be the artists and they want to you know uh, you know sell their uh, products like sell their paintings online so do you think it's like a good place for absolutely 100 percent why not that's how they get I confidence she's you know she's like i feel that she's definitely a young artist and she's 
definitely one of the you know come up with amazing stuff. She keeps asking me, Mama, don't you think that uh, you know I should sell my paintings and just do a charity and something like that? I think kids wow, want to sell everything today. My <laughs> son. <laughs> I'm telling you, the, the mindset has changed. Yeah. Yeah. They're not it's, it's moved from acquisition to experience. No, they want to make money, number one, yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. And number two, their idea of what they want to keep is different. So I think, um, AJ, I mean, this conversation can be never ending, really. And I think it's such a dynamic space. I think you've left us with a lot of, um, you know, clarity on the buzzwords. I think that that's kind of helped us. Uh, Gayatri, you want to just come in with the closing remarks? Thank you. Prachita, thank you so much. Thank for, you. Uh, I've had so much fun. Yes, so have we. Um, thank you for decoding the fascinating world of NFTs for us today. I would also like to thank the team uh, of Terrain yes. for helping us um, implement today's event. I request Ritima Khanna, our chairperson, to present the thank you so much. appreciation. Thank you very much. And that's all. This is always appreciated. Yes. To be. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's that. We hope you join us. I'm sure there will be many more questions coming your way soon. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for being so open and like desirous of knowing about this space and about um, this world. I mean, I don't have all the answers for sure, but I'm having such a blast. So keep reading what's going on internationally. The movement is so solid. Look on YouTube. Look at Mark Zuckerberg's speech on why Meta. Of course, like doubts on that one but like just keep looking at what's going on so you all can remain on top of it more than anything to have conversations with your kids because otherwise we're going to be like the geriatric people that we thought we were going to be like seriously like you know be with those irrelevant. irrelevant older generation that you don't understand it you know that the thing oh you don't get it sure this audience is researching on this like on their way back <laughs> then got art is hopefully going to crash <laughs> thank you very much Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, guys.